Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video and for this video I will be going through the cartel market items coming out of the Stalwart Leader Pack. Now I know this data mine information is coming out really late because the new cartel pack is going to be hitting the cartel market in a matter of a day or two but I'm just going to be going through them anyway because there are some really really nice stuff coming out of this pack and it's definitely worth talking about and also guys I've been taking your feedback to heart a lot of people have been saying that I ramble way too much on these items they kind of want a more short concise to the point version of these videos and so I'm going to try that as much as possible in this video I'm going to keep it really concise and short and short but I do at the end of the day want to give my take on these items whether I think it's worth buying low selling high with them and so I'll try to add that all and incorporate that and uh, make an overall decent video that kind of improves because I do want to take your feedback to heart I do want to improve my video content okay going on into what what's actually coming for this cartel pack we have three gold armor sets a little bit unconventional considering normally a cartel pack has only had two gold armor sets but the first one here is the emperor mantles armor set easily going to be the nicest armor set to come out of this pack uh, it has that Royal Emperor feel to it, and it's going to be really relevant considering at the end of Knights of the Eternal Throne, we do become the Emperor. We have our own army, we have the Alliance base and our throne room and everything like that. So it's really nice that we're getting these armor sets that can help us look the part. Uh, I really like the ornamentation and the gold plating on the upper body armor. The helmet could have been a little bit better, I think maybe a little bit more flamboyant, maybe a little bit larger uh, to make it look like an actual crown, but I'm not complaining. The upper body armor definitely redeems this armor set, so that's really nice in that regard. It does have a cape, which I think is going to dissuade quite a few people from actually liking it that much, but I don't think so. I, I don't think you could have really an Emperor's armor set without having a cape, considering almost all of the Emperors that we see in game have a cape of some sort. But moving on to the next armor set, we have the Resourceful Engineer's armor set. This is another gold one, which is unfortunate. I don't think it's really worthy of being gold because there's nothing about it that really distinguishes it from like a bronze armor set. I could easily see the design of it being a bronze armor set. The only unique thing about this one is that it is actually Bodhi Rook's armor set from Rogue One. So once again, we have that connection to the Star Wars movies. We've seen this time and time again with these cartel packs. We've seen a lot of connections with The Force Awakens lately. We've even seen a few to Star Wars Rebels. So it's just kind of another one, but I don't think people are really going to be willing to pay high prices even though it's Bodhi Rook's armor set because no one really cares, at least I don't think so. We'll see what ends up happening on the GTN, but as I mentioned earlier, there's nothing about the design of the armor set that makes me go, wow, this is amazing. But I think maybe those goggles would appear to would appeal to a few people who are running with their scoundrels or something like that, but we'll see. Overall, not bad for a gold armor set because it does have that connection to the movies. And thirdly, we have the Silent Warden's armor set. Always nice to see a Jedi themed one. And this is, I would say, particularly uh, themed for Jedi Shadows. It's got that stealth look to it. I really like the helmet. I think that would work well with a Sith. And I really like the fact that it goes well under the hood. I think the design of it is really nice. So that's going to be something I'm going to really be looking into uh, buying low, selling high with. Who knows how low this is going to go. Also, we have the upper body armor, which once again has a hood and a cape, which I think would dissuade a few people from wanting it. But overall, I kind of like the design. So I would say with these three gold armor sets in general, Bioware kind of kicked it out of the park. Uh, this, these are good armor sets. I'm really, really happy with these. Uh, I know we've seen some really bad gold armor sets in the past and so it's really nice to see that they're putting some effort into the designs. So moving on into some of the silver stuff, we also have some really nice silver armor sets. The first one you see here is the Bestial Fanatic. The upper body armor for this one looks really nice and finessed. I know when I look at it, I kind of think that it's similar to the Jedi Strategist armor set, which was a gold armor set from the Visionary Cartel packs a long time ago. If you actually compare both of them, they look a little bit similar. But, uh, but very nice in general. Also, once again, I think geared towards Jedi. I don't see many Sith uh, having this type of a look. The helmet looks a little bit weird, so I would say the upper body armor is the real highlight of this armor set. But for a silver armor set, very, very nice. The next one is the War Storm Veterans armor set. Once again, this is silver and very, very nice for a silver armor set. I am loving that upper body armor. It looks super cool. Very, very good for commandos. Kind of looks like a knockoff version of the Havoc Squad armor set. Uh, obviously, very, very different in design, but kind of looks like a knockoff version. And the um, helmet looks a little bit weird, but I could definitely see that appealing to some commandos out there. But this armor set is very much, I think, for commandos. I guess some mercenaries or power techs, if they want to use some parts of the armor set, they'll end up using it. But nonetheless, very, very nice for a silver armor set. Trust me, when we've seen some of the really bad stuff in previous cartel packs, this stuff is like gold. Um, obviously, it could be improved a lot more. However, 
it's it's good for now. Jumping onto the bronze armor set, this is where it kind of takes a little bit of a downturn. The next one is the Imperial Cadets armor set. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's just kind of generic armor set. The helmet is kind of cool. The upper body armor looks really plain and generic. So nothing really much to say here. I would kind of buy low sell high with this because I could see a lot of people maybe wanting that bronze helmet for their Imperial agents, uh, their sm snipers and operatives. Aside from that, I don't see much use for this armor set. Really generic once again. And then the next one is the Inscrutable Pursuers armor set. The helmet for this actually looks like a reskin of the Agile Reconnaissance helmet, which was a gold armor piece. So it's kind of uh, crazy to see that they reskinned a gold armor piece for bronze, and it looks almost identical to that. The upper body armor, once again, doesn't look bad, but it looks very plain and generic. I don't see this, once again, really going for high prices. However, once again, as I said with the silver armor sets, we have seen some really bad bronze armor sets in the past, and these are kind of a step up, step up from that, but still not to a high enough caliber that I would say they're actually putting effort into it. This, once again, just reskin stuff being hashed over time and time again. So this is all just gonna unfortunately be junk that's coming out of this pack. Speaking of junk, we have the three silver blasters. The Ortec F7 blaster rifle, the Ortec F7 blaster, and the Ortec F7 sniper rifle. Once again, these are going to be junk. Expect them to sell really, really badly on the G10. The only different and unique thing about them is that they have a laser sight now associated with them, which is pretty cool, but not enough to redeem them. It's the same thing with like the Grand Tech that we saw in the previous cartel pack and all the other blasters. You can go look in collections and see that they do not sell well on the GTN. Barely anyone actually ends up using them. The only people that use them are maybe people who have low level arts or low level alts or people that have just kind of started the game and are looking for cheap blasters to buy. But almost everyone out there is using the more expensive and fancier ones. So more junk. Needless to say, we have the two awesome platinum sabers, the Unstable Peacemaker's lightsaber and the Unstable Peacemaker's dual saber. So if you end up getting these, obviously you hit the jackpot, but once again, very, very rare and extremely, extremely hard drops to get. Even if you open up five, 10 hyper crates, there's no guarantee you'll get one. So that's about how rare they are. Going on into the mounts. The first one, once again, we have three gold mounts. The first one, I'm kind of iffy on it, is the Arclight Nova. I know now, when I first saw this, I was like, man, that's an ugly mount. I'm not gonna want this. I don't see a lot of people wanting it at all. Probably gonna drop to like 500K to a million on the GTN because that's what we've seen with other gold mounts of this type. However, when I was looking at the comment section on Delphi and Reddit and stuff, a lot of people were actually expressing interest in getting one of these. They said they thought they looked, they looked really nice. And so I'm really interested to hear your opinion, whether you think it's a good one or a bad one. I'm personally on the side of thinking it doesn't look too good and probably gonna drop low on the GTN. But since a lot of people have been expressing interest in it, maybe it, it will actually go for high prices. And it just might be my personal taste that it's not too nice of a mount. But that's gold, that's gonna be a rare drop. And so um, we'll see what happens with that on the GTN. But the next one is a really, really nice gold mount. Probably the highlight of this pack, the E95 Dread Behemoth, or Behemoth, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it is a tank. Now, a lot of people were scared that this was going to be a reskin of the Dark vs. Light Legendary mount, but it definitely is not. It has a different design, although they both are tanks. Also, one thing I really like about this one, it has, it has a flourish with that top uh, turret. So that's all really, really cool. And I always thought to myself, you know, when Bioware is making these mounts, why not just add a flourish? It makes it more rare, it makes it more desirable, and, um, and just kind of a cooler thing to have. And so it's awesome to see that they added a flourish with this. Other than that, that's gonna be a pretty awesome mount. I'm gonna be uh, scourging the GTN for good deals on those. I'll definitely try to buy low, sell high with those. Next, we have kind of a random beast mount, the Mighty Calf Hound, which is gold, guys. But, um, you know, I'm not, too sure about how this will sell because while it is a beast mount and beast mount beast mounts tend to do well i'm kind of jumping on my words a little bit here the beast mounts tend to do well we've seen this as a pet before i'm not sure where you see this in game but it probably is somewhere uh yeah i'm not sure about it like you'd think maybe a beast mount would sell well but the savage felone from the last cartel pack you know went below one mil on the gtn uh the the scythe or psych however you pronounce it, from the um, oppressor packs also drop below a mil. So these beast mounts aren't doing too well at the moment unless it's something really good like the Sith spawn or a Rancor. And so I'm not sure how this will go. We'll see if people like it or not. Probably gonna drop to like one mil or lower on the GTN, I would assume. So a really good item to buy low sell high with because I, you know beast mounts are popular, people like them. So you never know what they might sell for a few months down the road. Going on to the silver mounts, we have the Bloodthirsty Raptor. 
Yeah, same thing. They always take some random beast mount and give it to us a silver mount. We've seen Tauntauns, we've seen Uxie Beasts, we've seen, um, you know, uh, what's the other one? The Kai Buck from the Oppressor Packs, that's the one. And yeah, so they always drop in these random beast mounts. Expect them to be around 80,000 or 200,000 credits on the GTN, somewhere in that range. If you can pick it up for under 100k, I would say it's good to buy low sell high with beast mounts. Well, as I mentioned, you never know what they might sell for. And the next one kind of pisses me off. This is the Alliance Consoles Dace. This one's silver. And this is a trend that I've talked about previously in other videos that I've expressed a little bit of concern about. It's a double-edged sword. There are benefits and harms to this. Uh, the harms are pretty clear that this was um, the Dace model. Uh, this is a complete reskin, but the black version of this was in the Battler Packs. It was a gold mount, extremely rare, sold for extremely high prices on the GTN. Back then, it sold for anywhere from 4 to 6 million. Nowadays, you can net anywhere from 10 to 15 million selling that on the GTN. But now, they've just released a silver reskin version that is going to be a lot more common and going to sell very, very low on the GTN, which basically devalues all those gold days those gold uh, dace mounts that people got from the battler packs they might be uh, they might have held on to it to buy low sell high they might just you know have one in their inventory that they're willing to sell later and now that they've bioware's just reskinned this mount they've devalued all those which i think is unfair if you release a gold mount it should be exclusive because people pay money for the cartel packs people try their hardest to get these mounts because they think that it's going to you know set them apart from everyone else and now you just kind of release a silver version that's going to be for the general public and a lot more people are now going to have this mount and it's no longer going to have that exclusivity or rarity as i mentioned it's a double-edged sword because on the positive side we have this awesome cool mount that's now being made uh, available to everyone you don't have to be a really rich credit millionaire to get one and also great item to buy low sell high with you guys can see a trend here guys this pack is great to buy low sell high with because you have some really nice silver stuff that's going to be common that's going to drop low and that is very nice and probably going to sell for high prices in the future so this is something you're going to want to keep your eye on since this is a machine mount that is silver we have seen these drop uh, in previous cartel packs to around 50k around that area but since this is a dace and it was a gold mount and now it's reskinned it's probably going to go for much higher prices but once again we'll see what happens on the gtn and um and yeah you wanna go, you're going to want to keep your eye on that one another really amazing item coming out of this pack is the creature companion the nathema beast now the thema beast i'm sorry i'm as i mentioned earlier i'm slowing my words for some reason uh, this one's awesome. It's not a Nathema beast. It's very clearly a Nexu that looks really corrupted, has this kind of dark side energy going on. Now the Nexu from the Strategy Alliance packs, which is the other creature companion that is a Nexu, looks very similar to this. So once again, it's quite an obvious reskin. However, that Nexu is very rare, basically unobtainable in the game, and sold for millions upon millions of credits. Back when the Strategy Alliance packs were released, it was actually selling for like 5 million credits. Nowadays, you can get anywhere from like yeah, who knows what it sells for because there's actually none available on the GTN and the few that actually end up showing up go for like 100 million credits, 50 million credits, insane prices. And so you're going to want to definitely look at this one. Who knows what it will sell for because people know it's a popular mount, so they, uh, sorry, people know it's a popular companion uh, because of what happened with the Strategy Alliance packs and so people are probably not going to be willing to put it up for low prices on the GTN. But if the market gets flooded, then there's really nothing you can do. The prices will inevitably drop, which means it's a great time to buy low sell high with these. But if you don't care about credits, you can just care about having a cool companion. This is one of the nicer ones to have. Just look at it. It looks beautiful. And so it's going to be quite awesome to use that. Moving on to the color crystal, we have the cloud blue color crystal. This is kind of the generic um, Obi-Wan Kenobi Anakin crystal from Revenge of the Sith. We already have a, a generic blue crystal called the blue farmhands crystal so that's the one that luke skywalker uses in the new hope very very nice it's my favorite to use on my jedi but this one's going to be another favorite because it's you know it, you know it's available in the game but it's not available as an actual cartel market crystal that has the plus 41 stat and that can be unlocked in collections that doesn't exist right now so it's really nice to see that they added it it's something that i know a lot of people have been wanting Moving on to the pets, we have two bronze pets which are once again just going to be junk coming out of this pack. The Vigilant Mini Probe and the Hinterland Flutter Plume. Who cares about pets? They're just complete junk. They sell for nothing on the GTN. Great for pet collectors, but not so great when you're opening cartel packs and you keep getting these time and time again because they mean no profit and they mean that you're just getting these repeat items that are wor basically worthless on the GTN. So that's unfortunate. I really like uh, packs that don't have any pets. We actually have an emote coming out of this one. It's the unconvincing performance. Now this one is silver rarity. 
Once again, it's probably going to be junk because as we saw with the Gemini cartel packs, when emotes are released, they often don't sell too well on the GTN. However, I would think that this emote is going to look pretty cool considering it's probably something like you, you do a performance and people throw bottles at you from what I see from the image and it's going to be kind of cool to have. So I'll actually be looking forward to unlocking that emote, not looking forward to continually getting it on out of cartel packs and then not selling too well on the GTN. And finally, we have a weapon tuning. Now this is going to be the strap attachment weapon tuning, which is probably going to do exactly what it indicates, attach a strap to your blaster rifle or your blaster or your sniper rifle. I'm not sure how it's going to work on blaster pistols. It would look really weird to have a blaster pistol with a strap. And once again, I'm almost 100% sure it cannot work on your lightsabers. So this is similar to the laser sight weapon tuning. This is just going to be a weapon tuning usable on blaster rifles and sniper rifles. And so the amount of people that are going to be uh, able to use this tuning or basically the demand for it, it's going to be pretty low because a lot of people use sabers and a lot of people use blaster pistols. There's actually very few people in the game right now that even use blaster rifles or sniper rifles. So the demand is going to be low, meaning this is probably not going to go for that much on the GTN. However, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not a fan of this. I mean, I don't like it when they just release tunings that only apply to certain weapons. And just who cares about a strap? There are so many more cooler tunings you can have. Uh, the strap is just not not something I think was um, really needed to be added. All right, now before the video ends, I'm gonna let the uh, decorations go through so you guys can see what decorations are coming for all those people that like to decorate their strongholds. Uh, a lot of the decorations are actually from the chapter seven of Kotet, where you go through the Nathema vault, uh, Valkorion's vault, and he has a lot of decos and stuff in there. A lot of uh, decos come from that chapter, and there's some really, really nice stuff. You also have some Iocath things as well. So I'll let those go through, but I'm probably going to end the narration a little bit early. That is the video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Although I tried to be as concise as possible, it, the video still went super long. So I'm sorry for that. For everyone that kind of says I ramble too much, I, I might, but I really did try this time around to, uh, to keep it short. Also, this is about my fourth time narrating this video because every time I listen back to my narration, I always stuttered at some point and I uh, just messed it all up. And so this was actually a refined version, but I know I was studying over my words a little bit here and there. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what's happening to me today. I just kind of am stuttering a little bit, but whatever. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was kind of the purpose, getting this video out there, showing you guys the new items that are coming. I will leave a link to Dolphy.net in the description if you want to go check out these images for yourself and read the information for yourself. As I mentioned, I do hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.